This question will walk through how to calculate the weighted average number of shares. Lauren Limited had 42,000 common shares outstanding on January 1st, 2020. On March 1st, 2020, Lauren issued 20,000 shares in exchange for equipment. On July 1st, Lauren repurchased and canceled 10,000 shares. On October 1st, Lauren declared and issued a 10% stock dividend. Calculate the weighted average number of shares for Lauren for the year ended December 31st, 2020. Okay, so let's start with setting up our periods. So we've got January 1st, And the next thing that's going to happen is March 1st. So it's going to be January 1st to March 1st. And this is going to be the fraction of time it's going to be January, February, two months. So two over 12. The shares we're going to have had 42,000 shares outstanding on January 1st. So we had 42,000 outstanding. And then we're going to have a restatement column here for the stock dividend. And then we're going to have the weighted average here. Okay, next we're going to have, the next thing that's going to happen is on July 1st, Lauren repurchased and canceled. Actually, on March 1st, we issued, so March 1st to July 1st, we issued 20,000 shares in exchange for equipment. So 42,000 plus 20,000 is going to give us 62,000 plus 20,000 shares. And J March 1st to July 1st is going to be March, April, May, June. So that's going to be four out of 12 months. Okay. And then what do we have next? Then we've got, they can't, she, then on July 1st, Lauren purchased and canceled. So on July 1st to October 1st, July 1st to October 1st. October 1st was a stock dividend. So let's say July 1st to December 31st, we're gonna have canceled. So we're gonna go minus 10,000, which is gonna give us 52,000. And July 1st to December 1st is six out of 12 months. Now we also have the stock dividend, which we need to record. So it's a 10% stock dividend. So we're gonna to need to restate all these numbers for a 10% stock dividend, which means we're gonna multiply all of these uh, share numbers by 1.10. And if we do the math, so we take two divided by 12 times 42,000 times 1.1, we're gonna get the weighted average shares of 770 here, four over 12 times 62,000 times 1.10, we're gonna get 22,733. And for the shares July 1st to December 31st, six over 12 times 52,000 times 1.1, it's going to give me 28,600. So my total weighted average number of shares is going to be the sum of all those numbers, which is 59,033. So just to sum up, we've got our periods here. So these are our transaction periods. So what I've done when I've run these dates is I'm looking at where's the first date and then what happens when is the next transaction date? So I have a period where there's no transactions. So the share number is staying constant. So I'm figuring out that period. I'm figuring out how many months are in that period, which is giving me my fraction of time. And I'm including the share numbers here. This is the total shares. So when we say we're gonna issue another 20,000, we're adding it to the base number 
we're not just having the 20,000 here, that's really important. This is the total number of shares outstanding. So you can calculate the total weighted average. So we know, for instance, that on July 1st, Lauren repurchased and canceled 10,000 shares. So I've got the negative 10,000 here, just so I can remember. And that's why I took this number from 62,000 to 52,000. And because there's six months in this period where this number was constant, I've got six over 12. Stock dividends, we need to restate. So we restate the stock dividend for every period in this, um, for every period in this year. Even though the stock dividend only happened on October 1st, 2020, we still restate all of 2020 so that the earnings per share number is going to make sense. Otherwise, the earnings per share number is going to wrap up, is going to drop significantly on October 1st because there's going to be that many more shares outstanding. So net income is going to be divided by a bigger number. <clears throat> 